there are 8 million YouTube talks online. But if you like, you want to really experience it, you have to come in person. It's great. I mean, you'll just meet such cool people. Okay, everyone, I have a confession to make. I found out I only have five minutes, and sparse linear algebra is actually a rather complicated topic, so we're not gonna be fixing sparse linear algebra today. It's also rather complicated, so it's probably not gonna be easy. But I do think we're gonna have a lot of fun, so let's get started. So what is sparse linear algebra? Sparse linear algebra deals with sparse matrices, which are matrices with a lot of zeros. We don't want to store those zeros, so we can store them using a variety of compressed matrix formats. For example, CSR, or compressed sparse row. Now, if we look at how we would iterate through a compressed sparse row matrix, understanding this code is not particularly important, but just look at how many different arrays we have to access and all the complex indexing we have to do to go inside of it. This is the bane of scientific computing graduate students' lives everywhere. Right, it's verbose, and we have all these kind of negative properties, despite the fact that all we want to do is just iterate over the rows and then iterate over all of the elements within a row. And what's even worse is that if we then go on to another format, for example, doubly compressed sparse row, we have to go and rewrite our code and it can get even worse, right? We have additional complexity and then we have additional indexing. We have to do more mistakes that we can make. So despite the fact, again, that all we really want to do is iterate over the matrix. So could we do something simpler? Yes, so there have been some proposals to do things similar to this, um, where you can have range adapters. Range adapters take in a data structure and then provide a view where you can iterate over that data structure. For example, we could in, in, implement a rows customization point where we take in a sparse matrix data structure and return an iterable view of all of the rows. We can then iterate over the rows and then iterate over all of the elements in the row. This has all of the nice properties we would like. It's very concise, we clearly explain what we mean, and it's not as error prone. We don't have to do any explicit indexing. It's business cat approved. Now, how would we go about implementing this? Well, if we wanna implement this, we're gonna have to go and implement these customization points for all of the data structures we wanna support, support. And I don't like that. I don't like implementing iterators. That makes me a bit grouchy. And so, hmm, maybe this idea is not gonna work. I don't really think there is an easier way that we could use to implement views. <laughs> oh wait, there is. So the ranges library was added in C++ 20, and it adds a collection of range adapters for doing exactly this, um, uh, expressing views over data. So the ranges library actually makes it almost trivial to implement these kinds of range adapters for sparse matrices. Right, for CSR, if we wanna look at a, a particular row, all we have to do is go and look at the first and last index to find out where we're, we're looking at our row, go and make uh, views of the values and indices, zip those together, and then return them. Right, to look at all of the rows, we can just create a range adapter where we go and look at each individual row for all of our rows. All right, now let's look at some code. Demos are always fun, because you never know if they're gonna work. So, if we have a collection of different matrices, we can go and write code similar to what we looked at before. Let's see, is this big enough? Um, we can implement through the rows of a CSR matrix and say, print them all out. And then operate on these basically as regular ranges, right? If we wanna do something like implement a function we can also write concepts that express the different customization points that we want to support. For example, we could have a row iterable concept that expresses that we require that our data structure be able to iterate through rows. We could then do something like, because we're dealing simply with ranges, pick out all of the values so that we don't see the indices within a row, and then say, just print those out. Oh wait, I have a bug. Okay, we're gonna go over time, but trust me, that works. 
The thing that's fun about this, right, if we go back to our simpler code example before, is that we can plug in other data structures, for example, uh, a dense matrix or a doubly compressed uh, CSR, and then print those out as well. So we could go and print out uh, the rows here, and then see all of these. So we can write our functions once, and then as long as we support all of the iteration primitives that we want, we can go and operate on them. So sparse linear algebra is cool. I think having a high-level syntax like this is fun. We can implement it using these high-level uh, programming tools that we have now with the ranges library. Come and join me, and it'll be fun.